So let's move on to the approval side of timesheets. So like I said, once an employee signs their timesheet, they're done with, um, th from their perspective, they're done with the timesheet. Supervisors, um, once you have finished filling out your timesheet for the week, you'll come into the browse application area. You click anywhere on this blue bar. And you'll choose the manage and approve timesheet screen. This screen will automatically default to filter by your approval tasks. So automatically you'll see all of the signed timesheets for employees you are, that you are a primary supervisor over. This will only show signed timesheets. So if the timesheet hasn't been signed yet or if you've already approved it, you won't see it in this initial setup of the screen. But I'm going to show you how to access those timesheets in just a second here. As a supervisor, I can view the timesheet in this table view or I can switch it to form view. This form view looks a lot closer to what we were just looking at in the previous screen. You can access all of the same subtasks, all of the same um, information on the charge on the timesheet as you would on your own timesheet. So if I needed to add a new line to the timesheet, I can do that. And I can click through the charge tree that is assigned to Alicia and, uh, and add hours just like that. If I were to um, do that, I would also be required to submit a revision explanation um, as a supervisor when I enter her hours. I'm going to go ahead and just refresh our screen here. So it'll save that. As you can see, this, this sign timesheet is in the signed status. So after you're done reviewing the timesheet, you've looked at all of the hours. Um, if there are any notes, you've reviewed them. You can also access these subtasks. You can even add a charge favorite to the, for the employee if you want to. You can um, approve the timesheet just by clicking on the approve button. You'll get, oh, it's asking me to discard changes before I make, before I sign or approve a timesheet. So I discarded my changes. Now I can click the approve button. You get the, almost the same pop-up as you did on that previous screen. It's just saying by approving the timesheet, you are certifying the hours. When you're satisfied, you click OK. And now that timesheet is no longer in my approval task view. If I needed to go back and access it later, or <clears throat> if um, I wanted to view a timesheet that is in, of a different status, I can change this filter from approval tasks to status. And I can just click the execute button now, or I can fill in any of this optional criteria down below. So I could fill in the specific period that we're looking at. I could fill in, um, maybe I want to view the missing timesheets or a, an already processed timesheet. And just click the lightning bolt update button to update your screen. Now, as if anyone's assigned as a backup supervisor, this is also how you would access those timesheets. So you would have to change the filter by to status and then change your function code to backup supervisor, which would be an option here. If you want to view um, missing timesheets, make sure to click off the include missing status checkbox. And then you'll use the missing timesheet subtask to view the list of missing timesheets. So this is what I was referring to earlier when you if you when you're first going live and you're trying to identify users that may be having trouble logging into cost point. You can come and look at this missing um, timesheet sub you can fill in, you know, we'll fill in the first period that you'll be going live in time in cost point with would be the 515 timesheet. And let's just click our execute lightning bolt. And then click on the missing timesheet and you can see these are the users that I am a primary supervisor of that are missing timesheets for that period. And let me put it back to take this criteria out so we can view those other timesheets. 
like I said earlier, you can t- you can perform all the same functions in this screen as you could in the other screen, but you just do it for other for your supervisor employees. So you can add a, p- a project to their charge favorites if you wanted to. You can view the pay type summary or the revision audits, the leave. All of it is accessible as a supervisor. Does anyone have any questions about the approval screen or how to approve timesheets? There's actually a couple questions, Casey, um, and I have to hop off. One, can you approve multiple timesheets at once with the current configuration that feature is disabled? And the reason for that is we encourage supervisors to review all timesheets individually, not just highlight everybody and approve them. So by f- cl- approving them one by one, it, at least it pulls up the hours for you to give it a quick review instead of approving them all at once. If that needs to change, we can definitely look into changing that. Um, so hopefully that answers your question there, Todd. Um, as far as does the app have an option to clear the screen of all changes and refresh back to a default look? Um, so yes, the the refresh button in the top right hand corner, or excuse me, top left hand corner, that button there gives you the option to refresh anything back to the last saved uh, timesheet. So whether it's your timesheet or an employee's timesheet that you made changes and you're like, ooh, I shouldn't have done that, but you haven't saved it yet, then you can go up and hit that refresh button and it will refresh. Uh, if you hit clear all, it'll clear all your criteria that you have up there at the top and take you back to the original task view. If you go to the refresh subscreen, it'll just refresh your results that you had uh, pulled up previously. Great question, Todd. All right, Casey, the rest of yours, I'm hopping off. (laughs) Okay, thank you, David. (laughs) Are there any other questions about the approval process or using this approval screen, manipulating it um, to view timesheets that are that are for your employees? Okay, so I don't see any more questions coming through, Um, but let's jump into the last piece, which is just the um, leave requests and how to approve leave requests as well. So we're going to navigate back out of browse applications and we're not going to leave the timesheet area. We just need to go up to this manage work schedule screen. And this is where we will request leave as an employee. So it'll automatically default to the current month. To update that, you change the month slash year field. You can use a little calendar to to choose, or you can type in a day. And then hit the lightning bolt execute button to update your view. Holidays will appear in yellow, and these colors will actually also appear on your timesheets. So you'll know what days that you've requested leave or or there's pending leave, depending on the color of the timesheet. So in order to request the leave, you can highlight the week and select the edit date property subtask. And then use the arrows here to choose which day of the week you'd like to request PTO for. You can also click on the individual um, sell for that day and then open the subtask and you'll see the Thursday to the 21st is the is the date that I have selected here. In order to request leave, you cr- press the request leave button and type in the hours that you'd like to have that off. You can also type in a note to your supervisor for them to see when they go in to approve later on. So let's go ahead and once you're done requesting the leave, hit the save and continue button. And you see that cell is now red with a pending leave request. Once my supervisor approves it, it'll turn green. And like I said earlier, those colors will also appear on your timesheet. So let's also maybe we want to ask for Friday off as well. And let's just save that one. 
in order to delete a leave request, you just highlight the the leave request, click the the edit date property subtask, and click the delete button, and then save. And that that PTO request will be eliminated. You can also, if there's a whole bunch of leave requests that you'd like to request for the, you want to cancel all of them for the week, you can highlight the week and reset the selected weeks button. In order to approve a leave request, let's see if we can save this. In order to approve a leave request, you'll navigate back out to the Browse Applications menu and click on the Manage Resource Work Schedule screen. Now, when you have an employee that requests leave, you'll get an email notification with a little bit of information. So you'll be able to choose the work schedule day that matches that leave request. So you can display the correct week right here. And then hit the lightning bolt execute button to update your area down below. You can also narrow it down by employee ID or last name. If you had any pending leave requests, they would show right here in this pending leave request section with all of the information that we viewed on the previous screen. So the date, the hours, the notes, and then there's a drop down under the action column to approve or reject a leave request. You can also view all of your employees um, leave requests and, and schedules down here. So you can see, you know, this is especially helpful around the holidays when um, employees are requesting leave. They all want the same days off and you can keep it organized who has requested leave, who you've already approved leave for. Um, and it all shows up in a nice, a nice view right here. Um, now, I'm seeing that there's a couple of questions in the chat box. Um, can you extract the leave request data to Excel? Um, the leave request data um, in the manage work schedule screen, um, I don't think that you could really put that in Excel. Um, oh, and it looks like David might have um, might have answered that. Maybe we'll talk about a Cognos report, Todd, um, that pulls the requ vacation request. Um, there's also, um, oh, Stu, if a leave request is approved, can the, can the employee delete that if the plans change? Stu, yes, you can. Um, if a, Even if it's a uh, approved leave request, you can still delete it and reset that week or reset that day. Todd um, question, does the system have a calendar view that shows all the employees on PTO? So that's exactly what I was talking about here in the manage resource work schedule screen. Um, it shows it week by week, not in a, it doesn't show any more than a one week view, um, but you can see all of the company's um, leave requests and pending leave and approved leave requests in this area down below under your pending leave requests. Will the system allow you to take leave if you have no PTO left? Our policy is allow for negative 40 hours. So yes, that should be set up here. And we can show that under the regular salary exempt leave. So you can see um, employees will get a warning. So they'll just get a warning message that they can click through when they hit zero hours. And then they'll get an error at negative 40, so they will not be able to save a timesheet that goes beyond negative 40 hours in their balance. These are great questions. Does anyone else have any questions about the leave request process or about anything that we've talked about today, including timesheets or approvals or anything like that? Okay, I don't see any other questions coming through. Um, thank you all for your time today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording.